Speaking of homework help, who can we help with homework, Caitlin? All right, today our first question is a surface area question. Um, Nathan, I think you're the expert at this question. I think so. Uh, so I already took that and put it on my screen because when I draw them, they don't come out very well for these. <laughs> Although you uh, are a great drawer. I know. I'm just, you are. I'm very good at abstracts, like things that look like people kind sure. of. That's like, true. Like like life. The abstract yeah. is definitely your specialty. Not so much when we want to be as precise like with three-dimensional figures and we're trying to find surface area. Kind of want it to actually look like what it's supposed to. <laughs> so um, I got this up on my screen if you want to pop over there. Um, I want to really first emphasize when we see this three-dimensional figure, uh, a lot of times your first thought might be volume, uh, but we are looking for the total surface area. So one thing to consider, um, sometimes it gets mixed up. Think about volume as like if I were to fill this object with something, like pour sand in it or something. Uh, and total surface area, think about like if you wanted to paint the outside of this three-dimensional, this kind of wedge-looking figure, like maybe how much paint would you need. Um, so we have a three-dimensional figure. We're actually going to break this down into some two-dimensional pieces because we're only talking about area, which is two-dimensional. So here's what I'm doing. I'm thinking what pieces kind of make up the outside of this figure. Like if I was trying to make a wedge that looked like this, what kind of pieces would I want to put together? So what we have first is we have a triangle. Uh, so I'm going to sketch one of those. Yellow looks terrible on there, so let me get a different color. And I'm just going to do it just like this. It doesn't look great, but you get the idea. Um, so we've got this figure. It's a right triangle. And I'm going to color this in yellow so you can kind of see where I am getting this from. This is one of these side triangles of this kind of wedge looking shape. Um, if you notice, we actually have two of them. So we have two identical triangles on each side. So what I like to do is throw a little note in here and put a little times two. This is just a reminder when I am calculating my surface area, whatever I get for the surface area of this triangle, I have to double it because I have two of them. Uh, then what you should notice is I actually have a few rectangles. Um, it's hard for me to color these without coloring over them, but I have like a bottom piece here. Um, I've got another piece here, and then I've got this piece that you can mostly see which kind of fills this whole part. So I'm going to erase that because it's kind of messy, but hopefully that helped you get the idea. Um, so I'm going to look at these rectangles and what I need, that is a yellow again, uh, what I need are the dimensions. So let me get a better color if I can. Oh, I don't know why it's just it's determined to be yellow. I guess I actually have to change the color. All right, so I got this rectangle. And you have to be careful about this one. My first thought was I had three of the same rectangles. Um, but because of the shape of this triangle, uh, we have to be careful about the dimensions. Oh, let me actually take a step back. I forgot to label the dimensions on this triangle. Um, so we had six inches as a base right here. And we had eight inches, and that was right here, one of these sides. Uh, we'll get back to that in a little bit. So the dimensions of all of these rectangles, they're all 20 inches long. So I'm going to call this one 20 inches. And then again, we have to be careful about which one we're talking about and what the actual width is. So when I look at this, I'm kind of thinking about this figure right here. Make sure it's kind of clear. And if you look at it as I'm kind of sketching this, you see that this is 8 inches wide. And I only have one of those right now. Um, I'm going to keep drawing a little bit more. Probably didn't do a great job at spacing this stuff here, so I'm running out of room. Um, this is going to maintain, if I'm looking at, let's do this in red, at this rectangle now. This is still going to be 20 inches long, but now we have this right here. You can see is 6 inches wide now. And now for the last piece, this one's a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this. Where can I fit it? I'll just put it over here. Um, I would typically organize this better.
especially if I had paper, but I ran out of space. So, um, you know, try to organize it better than I am. Uh, last one, we're talking about this kind of like think of it as like the face of this. It's still 20 inches long. The tricky thing here, though, is I don't have this piece. So this is going to be a combination. Why did I keep on undoing that? A couple things. So if you notice, I don't know what this piece is right here. I'm going to highlight this in green so it's more clear. I don't know this. It was not given to me. But if you look at where it is on the figure, you should recognize that it's part of this right triangle, and it's actually the hypotenuse. So that actually adds a little bit of extra work, um, which is great because I have like no room left. So what I need to do is figure out the length of this side, which is the hypotenuse. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem. I had a, and I'm not going to do this in too much detail, otherwise it's going to take a while, and assuming that this should be familiar. Um, we're going to do 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. So the reason why this is c squared is because this is a hypotenuse. So I'm simplifying 36 plus 64 is c squared. I get 100. Uh, and then I'm going to be left with 10 when I take the square root of both sides. So again, I went through this kind of quick because I'm assuming your question is mostly about finding the surface area. Um, but if you need some help with Pythagorean theorem, like feel free to just give us a call and we can go, go through that a little bit more. Um, but I just use that to find this side of the triangle, uh, which is right here. I can highlight that in green too, right? that's where it's related. So now all we have to do is find the area of all four of the shapes. So again, if you can imagine putting all these shapes together, we would get that kind of big shape that we looked at, that three-dimensional figure. So area of a triangle, this is how I abbreviate it, one half the base times the height. Well, we know the base here is six right there. So we're going to say one half times six then we have a height of 8 inches times 8. And then we simplify that, and we get 324. Then you want to be careful, because remember we said that we are multiplying by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here, and I'm going to multiply by 2. And now I know the area of both triangles is, and I'm going to just write area of triangles, is 48 inches squared, so I remember what that actually refers to. So that's one piece. Then we have three rectangles. Remember the area of a rectangle, again how I abbreviate it, is the length times the width. So for this rectangle we're going to have 20 times 8, which is 160 inches squared. I'm doing the same thing here, 20 times 6 is 120 inches squared, and I'll circle those so we can find them more easily. And this last one is 20 times 10, which is 200 inches squared. So when we're looking at surface area, what we've done is we found the surface area of like each individual uh, piece of this three-dimensional figure. So in order to find the surface area of the entire figure, all we're going to do is add all these up. Uh, 200. And if you, especially if you're working with complex figures or you find yourself forgetting things or doubling and like duplicating certain measurements, just cross them out as you go. So I got that 200 inches plus 120 inches plus 160 and then plus 48 equals 320. 480, 528. And do not forget your units, inches squared. So that was kind of a long problem because it was really one question asking for surface area, but that one question actually turned into like five separate problems. So, um, but really all this is is just doing surface area kind of a bunch of times. And I think the challenge with this is identifying the shapes that make up and making sure that you get every single shape whenever you're talking about this.
I like that you drew the shapes out mm -hmm. rather than just trying to keep track with it not with numbers, but actually drawing. Okay, I have yeah. this triangle and I have this rectangle and this rectangle. And yeah. Definitely a good strategy to. Yeah, it really helps to, to think about what's happening and like think about those figures. And I know we talked about last season like a net. Like mm -hmm. this isn't one that you would really. A net is kind of like if you were to draw the figures, if you were to fold them up, mm -hmm. it would make it's like this the three-dimensional wrapping paper figure. that would go around it. Is yeah. what a net is. Um, which helps sometimes because then you can like visualize like if I fold this up, is it going to make that shape or not? Right. Um, but this one's a little bit more challenging to draw a net because of all the different irregular. Everywhere, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure.